Hello, my name is Samuel Biondololo, and today we're going to be talking about tool sets and palettes in Vectorworks. Um, as you'll uh, notice, uh, when you first open Vectorworks, you may not have some of these um, tool sets and palettes on the sides of your screen. Um, each one of these, we're going to do a little walkthrough of what each of them are and what they do, um, is really uh, ways to help your workflow in Vectorworks. So I have mine set up in a way that has worked well for me. Um, you may have other ways that you prefer to set up your workspace, but we're going to go through and talk about um, what most of these do. Um, the first thing uh, is that you can toggle these on and off. Um, also note that I am using the Mac version of Vectorworks, so there may be some differences uh, between Mac and Windows if you're using a Windows device. Uh, however, uh, they should work pretty much the same. I just know that that might not be exactly the same um, might not be the exact same place on the screen as I as I click occasionally. Um, so in our new drawing, uh, you can hit Window and Palettes, and you'll see here all of the palettes that are available to you um, in Vectorworks. Uh, the first one is Snapping, um, which if I turn that off, that was this one that was over here. Um, so if I go to Window, Palettes, Snapping, that brings it back into uh, the world. Um, this is attached right now to the Attributes palette. Um, in here we have the snapping, the attributes palette, which I keep free floating around, um, so I can kind of move this to wherever is convenient for me. Um, and then the other palettes that we have are working planes, which we don't need to worry too much about. Um, in this lecture, the resource manager, which holds all of your resources for Vectorworks. Um, so you have a lot of different things in the resource manager that we'll talk about. Um, you also have navigation, which will go through layers and classes, and visualization, which we'll talk about uh, in later uh, lectures as well. Um, but the uh, window palettes, and that's how you're going to be able to um, uh, turn on and off your palette. So sometimes you don't want um, your palette seen. Um, there's also something called basic and tool sets, which are what I have over here. Um, so first, we'll walk through basic. So basic is. Um, Selecting what type of functions you want to be doing with your mouse. Um, so, for example, right now I have it in click mode, um, which is just a mouse function, um, and you can uh, select objects in the software. Um, the second is a hand move tool, um, which you can move the drawing around with. Um, another uh, way to move the drawing around is to hit the shift key. I'm holding the shift key down right now, and that is allowing me just to move. Um, if you just scroll your mouse in and out, it'll do this. It's actually a zoom function, so you have to use the shift key um, to scroll around the page. Um, this here is the 3D flyover tool. Um, this will give you a little bit of information about uh, the flyover tool. You can hit, do not uh, select this dialog box. Vectorworks will often bring up these um, types of warnings just to let you know sort of what things do. Uh, the 3D flyover tool doesn't really do much because there's nothing in this drawing yet, but it actually lets you see the world in three dimensions. We'll be using that quite a bit. I'll reset this back to the 2D plan. Um, it's just zoom tool, uh, which allows you to select an area and zoom into it. Uh, the text tool, which can be used for uh, labeling objects. Um, or creating a note. Um, you have a callout tool, which allows you to call out um, various things. Okay, so you can use this to select um, if you have something you want to sort of call out, um, that creates an automatic callout box for you. Um, this is called the locus tool. So this is if you want to save a point in the drawing. Um, all these are basically little X's that get created um, for the most part. Um, this one is uh, an assertion tool, which I'm going to worry about right now. Uh, the line tool. Um, the line tool is probably the one that I use the most. Um, it's really simple. You're able to draw lines with it. So um, uh, as I'm drawing it over here, you'll see uh, it's showing the line. It's showing the length of the line, which is 17 feet, and it's showing the angle of the line. Um, so if I go up here, it's an 18 degree angle. If I go down here, it's a 30 degree angle. Um, now you'll notice that that uh, marked at 30 degrees. The reason for that is uh, the snapping palette, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, lines and points can snap to various things. Um, 
based on your settings and how uh, sort of sensitive you want it to be. Um, but right now I have all the snap settings on, so it'll tell me uh, 30, uh, it should tell me 45, 60, um, things of that nature. Um, you can also manually assign uh, the lengths. So for example, this is a 70 foot line, but say I want it to be a 21 foot line, I hit the tab button. I just hit the tab button and then you can type in what length you want the line to be. And then it sets that. So that is now always gonna be 21 feet no matter where you go and you can just adjust the angle. Uh, say I want it to be a 90 degree line, I just hit tab twice, hit 90 degrees, and now it's going to be 90 degrees. And I can't modify it from that. Um, you can also adjust its, um, its width on this. Uh, it's not as important uh, with, with lines, but we'll show it in um, boxes and squares as well. Um, there's two up here in the top. You'll notice that there's two sets of lines, okay? So you have the regular line point, which is you know, one to here, and then the other one, which is actually a center line point, which uh, when we get into lighting um, and a couple of the scenic things, you'll see why this is important. Um, and why this works really well, but this is basically allows you to start at the center point of a line and draw outward. Um, the important thing to note is that when you're measuring with this, if I say 10 feet, this line actually does not end up being 10 feet. If I go back to the regular line tool, um, this line becomes 20 feet. So when you hit that little button and you're going from the center point of the line, you're actually measuring the length of the line from the point of origin, not the entire line. So that's gonna be something that's gonna be important later on um, as we're looking at that sort of thing. Um, the double line tool allows you to have, uh, draw two lines at once. For example, if you want to create a pipe um, in 2D, or um, there's a couple other reasons why you'd want a double line tool. I don't use this one as much. Um, then we get into shapes. So we have the rectangle tool. Um, exactly what it sounds like. Um, you can adjust the X and Y change um, by pressing the tab button and that way you can adjust the height and width of this. Um, so we're actually going to start uh, today, um, I'm going to be building this file throughout the course um, uh, or I'll be building multiple files but this will be one of the files that we build. We're actually going to start by uh, building some very simple uh, sets. So I'm going to actually start uh, by building a stage in our drawing here. Um, and we'll, we'll do more of that later, but I'm just going to make it a 25 foot, uh, X and a 15 foot Y. Um, oh, I did uh, 25 and 15, um, oh, negative 15. So it's going down and set up. And this is going to be our stage. Um, another thing that I like to use the, uh, line tool for is for helping line up objects. There you go. So I've just created a simple stage on my uh, piece of paper here, um, which we'll get back to, but that's the, um, the rectangle tool. Um, you also have the rectangle with curved edges, um, which is nice sometimes for title blocks or that sort of thing. Um, circle tool, the oval tool, All these create nice shapes. Um, this is the arc tool, so you can um, create a circle um, or sweep through different arcs. Um, and again, all of these have different settings. So, for example, this you, know, you can you can set up this so that you go arc like that, and that's the way you want to do it. Or you set three points and then have it set like that. Um, the reason for that is that sometimes there's different ways you want to get to your final arc form. You might only have data points of three different things, and so it wants to give you all of the options um, you could possibly need when you're building items. Um, the freehand tool allows you to draw lines freehand. It kind of strains it out for you, but at the end of the day, it kind of just builds a shape based on whatever you've made. Um, I don't use that one as often. Um, the polyline tool, allows you to build shapes uh, in the form of a polygon. It'll, it'll always, always, always connect for you. Um, and then the polygon tool is a very similar one that you create the full shape. Um, hexagon, 
same sort of idea. You can build a hexagon. Um, and then these are tools for, for uh, mapping. Another uh, good tool to know about in the basic tool set is the uh, rotate tool. So for example, with this um, rectangle, put the center of it. There we go. So you have to select the object first, and then you get this big uh, object here, and you hit here, and then you hit a point. So this is the, the center of rotation, and then you click outward, and now you can rotate the shape, uh, whatever you want it to be. Um, if you didn't do that, um, like if I click over here, and I hit here, you're gonna rotate around that point. Oops. Uh, so now I've messed up my stage. So if you ever want to undo something, uh, Command Z is your friend, just like most programs. Um, you can also go up here and hit Edit Undo, um, which is Command Z or Control Z if you're on a Windows machine. Um, the other tool in Basic that you're going to want is the Mirror Tool. Um, so same sort of idea here. You're going to want to select an object, hit the Mirror Tool, um, and what this does is it creates an exact mirror over a line of whatever object you've created. So I've just created a second uh, rectangle uh, exactly as the first, um, similar to um, uh, to that. So, so the mirror tool is very useful in, in that sort of when you need to replicate things or go over center line um, and that sort of um, that sort of object. So I'm going to create another line here. Put that back in that mode. Um, and so this is the split tool. So what this does is this allows you to cut an object at a certain point. So I've just cut this line into two parts. So now what I've done is I can separate this line from that line and I can use that to cut my selected surface into as many parts as I like. Um, uh, the connect combine tool is uh, a similar it's sort of the inverse of that. So if I uh, cut on the line, I could use the connect tool to join two lines together. Um, and then the trim tool cuts off based on another object. So if I draw a line through this rectangle and I want to cut off of that, it cuts to the next line point. So if I cut here, so now the line is just inside the rectangle. So sometimes if you're trying to keep things really clean, you, you know, if you try to draw this freehand, um, like if I go here and my snapping isn't really good, I might like go, you know, uh, it snapped automatically for me. I go like here to here because I'm trying to be really careful, but it still doesn't quite hit the mark. Um, I find it easier sometimes just to draw the line um, like through the object and then snip off the ends. And that way you know that it's a really solid connection. Um, and no matter how much you zoom in, you're you're going to have a really uh, solid connection that's going to be touching that that other line that you're trying to work with. Uh, so that's something that I use it for. You can also just use it to trim off if you see you know sort of clutter in your drawing, uh, that sort of thing. Um, the rest of these tools aren't as important. The measure tool. Um, can measure things. Uh, most of the time, I it measures it and tells you the scale. Um, a lot of times with the measure tool, you can you can do a bunch of weird stuff with it. Um, a lot of times, I use a line and then just delete the line. So for example, if I want to measure how long this is, I can go, oh, okay, that's 25 feet, and then just backspace to delete. Um, that's how I tend to do it, but you can also use the measure tool. Um, other things in this, um, your dimensioning. So you can create dimensions uh, within the tool set. Uh, so example, uh, 25 feet. So if I want to make sure that on my drawing, uh, they know that the stage width is 25 feet and the depth is going to be 15 feet. Uh, oh, now see there's a problem there with the text being on the wrong side. So if I look over here and we'll learn about object info in a second, I can hit flip text and now it'll be on the other side. Um, and there's different ways to dimension. The one that I use pretty much all the time is constrained linear dimension, um, which tends to get me the right answer most of the time. I double check it though, because sometimes unconstrained linear dimension um, 
works better at angles that are not, uh, works for angles that are not uh, 90 degrees, uh, whereas this tends to be more for vertical or, or um, horizontal uh, surfaces. Um, the other thing you can uh, use in, in the measuring category is the protractor tool, um, and you can measure, you know, what lines are related to. Again, I tend to use the line tool and just go, okay, what's the, you know, what's the angle, and I can, I can tell it from uh, just reading the information on the line tool. Um, so below the basics, I'm going to actually put this, um, I'm going to edit this to be inside of the drawing that we have here. Okay, inside of the, so that's basics. That's most of the things that you need to get started uh, drawing. Um, there's a couple other tools in there that uh, we'll explore in the other tool sets, um, that are the other palettes. Uh, this tool set, um, there's a couple of different options down below. This has a lot of your pre, uh, pre-made stuff, uh, sort of stuffed in there. Um, so this has things like lighting instrument tool. Um, and I wanna drop a lighting instrument and I can decide uh, what I want that instrument to be. Uh, there's another way to do this that we'll see in the lighting uh, section. Um, but say I want there to be a fall spot there, I can just drop that line tool. Um, and again, to delete an object, all you have to do is just select it and then hit the backspace button and then that will get rid of it. Um, you can also create a lighting pipe, which we will look at in the uh, lighting section. Um, there's soft goods, uh, focus points, accessories, um, line distribute, creating a stage. Uh, some of these are more 3D topics. Um, you can also create walls and that sort of um, stuff, and then also shapes. Um, you'll notice some of these things do combine over, like flyover tool was, was here and here. So they kind of work in two, two different places. Um, but some of these are really nice for creating 3D objects. Um, so for example, uh, with the cone, uh, you can tell it you want to be a 10 foot high cone and then set the width. Um, it's going to be a really shallow cone. Um, yes, I know about the fiber tool. And now you have the fiber tool, you can see that cone in 3D. Um, again, we're going to cover 3D later in the course. Right now, we're really only looking at 2D drafting, um, but that's sort of the, uh, the way that works. Um, there's also uh, you know, some stuff in here for lighting and looking at render works, uh, topics which we'll cover later, um, desks, cabinets, um, dimension lines are also in here, just like they are in the basic tool set. Um, uh, there's also a title box, we get to sheet layers, which we'll talk about later, um, and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, these are bolts and things. Um, so there's a lot of different objects in there. Um, so moving over to um, some other palettes. So this is the attributes uh, set. Um, so this determines what an object looks like. So if we have a line, uh, one of the major things that I use for this is line weight. So you can actually set the line weight if you want it to be a deeper shade. Um, you can also color lines. So if you want it to be something, that's a really terrible color for a line. Uh, if you want it to be something uh, sort of different or you know, stand out and you want to make it um, a different color other than uh, the standard black, um, you can do that and set the line weight um, as well. So you sort of have different um, capacities there. Um, in terms of uh, you know polygons, you can also set, uh, this is going to set the style of the line outside of it. So you'll see there's two parts to this rectangle. There's the outside, which is the line that we're modifying here. And then there's the inside bit, which is what's being modified here. So if I select green and that, that's gonna, whoa, hello. Uh, that's gonna make the green, uh, let's make that a nicer color or something. There you go, so that's gonna make that blue. There's a couple other options. You can create patterns, gradients, that sort of thing. You can also select none, um, which makes it so that there is, uh, it's an opaque filling. There's an you can see underneath the object. Um, that is something um, that's kind of a nice, nice thing when you're building objects on top of other objects, you need to be able to see through them. Um, for right now, we're gonna keep this as a solid white um, since it is our stage deck. Um, and that's what we'll be working on um, throughout a couple of the other modules. Um, what I talked about here was snapping. Um, so this is what happens when, if you see, if I try to draw a line, um, 
see how my cursor kind of attaches automatically to that other line so that when I start, it creates a really nice clean connection and it's always connected to that point. Um, that's what snapping does. Um, you can turn that on and off. There's certain, I don't know, lights are all selected. Um, you can snap to a grid. Um, you can snap to objects. Um, this is the 30, 60, 45 we saw earlier, um, intersections of other objects, um, smart points, which I don't always have turned on, um, certain distances, and then edges and tangents. So that's like if you have a circle, you can attach the edge of the circle, um, which is which is nice to have sort of the ability to attach to the edge of, of objects and points. So it kind of helps to uh, make your drawing faster and makes you not have to be joining points all the time. It sort of auto joins. Um, which is nice. Sometimes it snaps if you have a really complex drawing. It snaps to the wrong things. So you want to turn some of those off so you have more control. Um, so that's sort of the the uh, sort of uh, constant battle with vector is, is do you want it more control or do you want uh, faster drawing uh, speed? And it really depends on the on uh, where you are on the drawing and how complex your drawing is. Sometimes I'll start uh, drawing because the the basics are very simple, and then as it gets more complex, I'll start making things so I have to be a little bit more fine tuning with that. Um, object info uh, is variable for whatever you've selected. So if I've selected a rectangle, this will tell me uh, some important things about it. For example, um, which plane it's on, uh, class and layer. And we'll talk about classes and layers a little bit later in this module. Um, and then, you know, things like its rotation um, and that sort of, you know, some other stuff, its area, um, perimeter, some of those uh, types of things. Um, you can also, in as we saw with the um, dimension lines, you have some selections over your dimension lines, including settings, like do you want it to uh, be an ASME uh, versus architectural versus, um, uh, oh, mine aren't in here, but I have, I have a uh, personal um, dimension standard that I like to use for my drawings. Um, and this just sort of lets you uh, select the basic standards. And then you can also ch you know pick um, how far you want your dimension to be away from the drawing. Uh, the other way you can do that is through, you know, dragging it like I had done before. Um, you can select, you know, the arrows, that sort of thing. So settings for your various objects. So this, this will shift based on um, what you have selected. So sometimes there's a lot of options, sometimes there's very few options. Again, this will be coming to play quite a bit with lighting. Um, data will have some items more in lighting that we'll worry about, and then rendering, uh, we'll talk about sort of in 3D, um, is, is more what rendering is based on. Uh, your navigation tool, which I have at, at the bottom, uh, bottom right of my screen, uh, shows you your classes breakup, your uh, layer breakup, and your sheet layers. Um, we'll talk through viewports, sheet layers, and all that stuff later. Uh, layers and classes we'll talk about later on, but this allows you to uh, turn things on and off um, in your uh, drawing. Okay, um, a couple of layers, that, things I don't have turned on. Uh, resource manager, which is your library. Uh, Vectors has a default library. Um, I am a service select member, so I have access to another library that I may occasionally use to show some things, but it's basically just more of the same stuff um, that's in the regular Vectorworks libraries. Um, in here, there's a lot of different uh, folders with various, uh, let me go into controls, lighting, uh, we'll just you know do. Um, so this, there's actually a bunch of different uh, consoles in here that you can grab. Um, so for example, in, uh, you know, in our little theater that we're building here, um, if in the back I want to set up a, a table, you know, a six foot wide table, um, for our tech booth, which again, I'm going to use the line tool to line this up so it's nice and centered in the room. Um, I can use, instead of drawing, I mean, instead of drawing the consoles, you can use the uh, resource manager uh, to select the object. So instead of um, doing that, all you have to do to grab it. Um, so the console that I want to use for this show is an ETC Geo. 
All I do is double click. Um, it's telling me Doesn't like that. Oh, it's downloading it. There we go. I can set my console in the back of the house. So there we'll put an audio console later. Um, and then this actually will um, create a 3D model, um, but it also creates a 2D model for your for your plan view. Um, so that's what we're going to be be making in, in uh, this version. Um, which will be a, a 2D plan of this little venue that we've made. Um, the, uh, so the resource manager um, is mainly uh, for uh, grabbing different different objects. Uh, there's not just lighting instruments and consoles. There's also uh, building stuff in here and landscape. You can get um, plants. Uh, so these are some 2D uh, objects. To download, it doesn't have all these uh, libraries always automatically in there. Um, so I've now just put a 2D tree into my drawing. That is huge um, in comparison to my stage, but you can put some of that sort of stuff in there. It's pre drawn for you, so that's kind of useful. Um, and then the last uh, palette that I will tell you about, but we won't really look at too much, is visualization which will be what we use um, to turn lights on and off uh, when we're looking at photometrics and looking at uh, lighting objects. Um, so that is an overview of tools and uh, palettes. Um, just a basic uh, overview of that. Uh, the next um, topic we'll, we'll cover some more uh, on classes and layers and setting up your drawings uh, for success on that. So uh, thank you and uh, welcome to the course.